Hello, my name is Roberto Canton. I'm a senior systems engineer with the Vicla Hybrid Service Group. Um, I cover uh, the Southeast Territory, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Vicla, Vicla Hybrid Service and our service offering. Uh, Vicla Hybrid Service comes in two service offerings today, a uh, dedicated cloud and a virtual private cloud, as you can see on the screen. Uh, basically, it's purchasers purchase resources in this amount that you see on the screen. And uh, the virtual private cloud is a truly uh, uh, logically isolated offering. Uh, it's what is called a multi-tenant cloud. Uh, on a dedicated side, you've got a physically isolated compute. Uh, customers have the capability of actually not having a problem with a noisy neighbor in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this type of offering. And also, customers have the capability of actually uh, oversubscribing resources in the form of CPU. Um, one other advantage of the dedicated cloud is that your customers also have the capability of bringing existing Microsoft licenses if they have the appropriate agreement signing with Microsoft so that they can bring those licenses into the cloud simply because of the fact that the computer is physically isolated. So let me give you a quick demonstration of uh, the Vika Hybrid Service. So depending on the type of offering that you purchase, uh, whether it's a virtual private cloud or a dedicated cloud, um, you will get a little bit of a little bit of a different uh, user interface when you log in. Uh, with the virtual private cloud, customers only get one virtual data center. Uh, so as you can see in my account, I have several different virtual data centers down here. That's because in my account, I also have a dedicated cloud. Uh, that's another advantage of the dedicated cloud over the virtual private cloud. Uh, with a dedicated cloud, you have the capability of adding additional virtual data centers. Um, so you can carve out the resources that you purchase into many different virtual data centers if you wish to do that. You have the capability of either using all of the resources or just allocating sources into separate, into separate data centers if you wish. Um, a little bit about the user interface. Uh, over here in the landing page, you get a resource snapshot, basically uh, the resources that you have purchased versus the resources that you have allocated. Gives you a holistic view of the amount of virtual machines and public IPs uh, that, that your customer is running. Uh, you have a link to purchase more resources. So customers can, uh, by clicking this link, they will be taken to the, your My VMware portal. Uh, from there, they, they will have the capability of actually adding uh, to the minimums that they purchase. So remember, the minimums that they purchase are uh, these amounts over here that I was showing you. Uh, but for example, if I'm a customer virtual private, virtual private cloud, uh, but I need four terabytes of storage versus two, um, then I would buy these minimums and I would add an additional SKU of storage. So uh, that's what your customers will be able to do by clicking on this link. You also have a user tab. You can give users any of these uh, six different roles. You got a virtual machine staff, which gives you uh, visibility into all the virtual machines running uh, in the vCloud hybrid service, regardless of which virtual data center they're running in. And you have access to the gateways. Now, uh, gateways, um, you get a virtual edge gateway um, with each virtual data center uh, that you purchase, uh, either through a virtual private cloud or that you create uh, through a dedicated cloud. And uh, through the edge gateway is where we actually control all of, the, all of the security. This is where your customer will create uh, your IPsec VPN so they have connectivity back into their data center. Uh, this is where they will also, also create any uh, firewall rules uh, so that their VMs that they create in VCHS can talk to the external world and that the external world can talk back to the uh, um, uh, to the VCHS infrastructure that they, that they purchase. Um, one other thing that I would like to mention is the fact that, uh, uh, you know, we call it VCLA hybrid service for a reason. Uh, there is a reason why we have the word hybrid in there. Um, and a lot of people, when we talk about VCLA hybrid service, they only think about hybrid being, okay, I have some VMs in the, in the public cloud, I have some VMs in my private cloud, and I can link them together. Uh, but we can actually have a, 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 a we can actually have a, a hybrid infrastructure on the application level, as referenced by this uh, by this PowerPoint that I have on the screen. Uh, this is actually a SharePoint architecture diagram that can very well uh, mimic a three tier application or even a SharePoint diagram uh, for one of your healthcare customers. So, for example, let's say that I'm a healthcare organization that I need to give access to some external vendors. Uh, to be able to upload files into my SharePoint virtual into my SharePoint infrastructure. However, I don't want to give uh, those vendors, uh, those vendors access to my internal network. On the left hand side, you got a uh, the, the customer's data center, the private data center. Uh, this is very typical of almost every customer. They have an external router uh, that that basically sits on the edge of the internet. Uh, they can have an edge gateway or or like a third party firewall device. 
And then they have the SharePoint ad network here with SharePoint VM that is accessed by their, their internal users. A SQL database that contains basically all of the files and all of the content from that SharePoint infrastructure. And the domain controller that is basically used for authentication. On the right-hand side, you can actually set this customer up uh, with VCHS on the right-hand side. They have a SharePoint VM. This SharePoint VM is accessed by their external vendors directly from the internet by, 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 by using the firewalls and the, um, and the capability that the edge gateway gives them. Uh, so if I'm an external vendor for this particular customer, I can simply uh, come in through this uh, edge gateway, access this SharePoint VM, enter my credentials, which would be uh, basically uh, authenticated using this domain controller here, um, and I can upload a file. Now, this domain controller is actually replicating back to the domain controller on site uh, via an IPsec VPN that is, connect that is connecting the two environments here. Um, when I have an external vendor go ahead and uh, upload a file in this SharePoint VM, uh, it transfers uh, the IPsec VPN and it gets placed directly on the SQL database on-prem. So your customer may have actually a regulatory issue, whether that be an internal regulatory issue or an external one from like a government source that requires them to keep the data within the four walls of their data center. So this would have basically alleviate that, uh, that kind of scenario uh, for your customers, and this could be a, a very well hybrid infrastructure at the application level. So just remember that the word hybrid doesn't necessarily mean a data center connected to the cloud but it, uh, on a data center level or a VM level, but it can also be done at the application level. 